Hello there and welcome to the Mr. Sin channel. Today we are going to be reviewing Eric Erickson's theory of psychosocial development. Erickson identified eight stages of development that people go through during their life. Each stage is categorized by different needs, conflicts, and life events. As individuals progress through the different stages, they continue to be influenced by the previous stages. The first stage is trust versus mistrust, which generally occurs during the first year of life. Here an infant is learning to trust the world. In order for the infant to develop trust, the infant needs to be shown affection and feel safe and secure. All of this helps the infant develop a secure attachment. If a person does not receive these things in this stage, it may lead to an insecure attachment to form and lead the infant to mistrust their surroundings. As the child moves from infancy to early childhood, they move into the next stage, which is autonomy versus shame and doubt. This is when children start to be able to separate items in their environment. They understand what is theirs and what is someone else's. During this stage, a child starts to develop independence. Children during this stage want to explore their environment and have control over aspects of life. Life events during this stage would include things such as potty training. Positive reinforcement here is key. Children are exploring the world in which they live in and trying to understand who they are. Parents during this stage play a major role. Supporting a child in their search for autonomy allows a child to develop self-confidence and independence. However, if positive reinforcement is not provided and a child is not allowed to try tasks on their own, they may develop shame and doubt. As children get older and move more into their preschool years, they go into the next stage, which is initiative versus guilt. Here, children begin to take initiative and plan activities. Children during this stage want to learn and be social. Children begin to take initiative and plan activities, their imagination takes off, and they start to partake in independent activities. It's important that in this stage that a child be allowed to have control over some aspects of life. This will help a child develop confidence and autonomy. If a child's efforts to be more social and independent are met with harsh criticism or prevented, it may weaken a child's confidence and cause the child to question themselves on whether or not they can do different things. From there, we move into our next stage, which is industry versus inferiority. In this stage, children develop a sense of competence and self-esteem through mastering different skills. School is one of the most important events during this stage. Children start to make more of their own decisions and grapple with the concept of good and bad. Individuals during this stage will also start to identify with different social factors, such as the type of clothes they are wearing, the jobs their parents have, and so forth. During this stage, it's common for children to start to compare themselves with other children, and it's important that children receive constructive feedback. As a child moves into middle and high school, they move into the next stage, which is identity versus role confusion. Here, an individual notices that people have different interests and social roles. Peer groups become extremely important during this stage, and individuals will often seek friendships. During this stage, individuals will often conform to their friendships, and roles start to solidify as people start to try and figure out their place in the world. Role models and peer groups become extremely important during this stage, as individuals will often look outward for validation. Now, it is common in this stage to experience an identity crisis, as individuals try to understand what their beliefs, values, and future goals are. After identity versus role confusion, an individual moves into the next stage, which is intimacy versus isolation. Here, young adults seek meaningful relationships with others, find something they are passionate about, and pursue a career. Significant life events during this stage may include advancing in one's career, starting a business, getting married, or starting a family. Being able to successfully navigate this stage often leads to more intimate, lasting relationships and a feeling of purpose. But if an individual is not able to find something they are passionate about, they may feel isolated and disconnected from society. Eventually, an individual moves into generativity versus stagnation. This generally happens in a person's 40s. Here, an individual seeks to make a positive impact on the next generation, oftentimes through work, parenting, or community involvement. The people at work and at home are often the ones who have the greatest influence on an individual during this stage. 
If an individual does not feel like they have a purpose or if they were unable to resolve different conflicts from previous stages, they may become pessimistic about the world and feel stuck in life. Individuals who feel stuck may start to feel hopelessness or question what they're doing with their life. This could lead to an individual doing a big life change, such as changing careers or making a big purchase. This is sometimes referenced as a midlife crisis. The last stage is integrity versus despair. Here, individuals will reflect on their lives. What happens in this stage really depends on the previous stages. Individuals who will reflect on life and feel a sense of integrity, a sense of fulfillment, and acceptance of life as a whole will often feel like they had a purpose in their life. On the other hand, individuals who experience despair may feel regret, bitterness, and sadness as they feel like they have not done enough with their life. Individuals that develop a sense of integrity often are able to cope with the concept of death more easily, as they will feel like they have lived a full life. Conversely, individuals who have developed a sense of despair may struggle more with the concept of death, feeling like they have not lived life to the fullest. We can see that Eric Erikson's different stages of development continue to build through an individual's life. As people grow older, the stages become more complex and integrated with each other. Every stage has a conflict, and while we all experience life from our own lens and will experience life events on our own time, we can use these stages to better understand different transitions and milestones people may go through in their lives. All right, that was just a quick summary of Eric Erickson's stages of development. Remember, if you found value in this video, consider subscribing and check out my ultimate review packet if you need more help with your AP Psychology class. As always, I'm Mr. Sin. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time online.